This is the ENT Leica microscope that is used for major ear cases as well as superglottoplasties. You will notice that this is the power button, the light button, and the camera box. After you've plugged in the microscope, press the power button. Please make sure that the camera light is on. If this light is on, you will not get any image on the screen. The microscope is equipped with two bulbs. It's built into the microscope and it has to be changed by Biomed when it has to be changed. If you look underneath, there's a silver knob. There are two positions for the knob, one for lamp one and lump one for lamp two. This is one position and that's the other position. Please note the various parts of the microscope. Here is the left hand control, the right hand control, the main surgeon's oculars, the assistant's oculars, and the camera head. You will also find the knobs for adjusting various axes. Here is the A knob, which turns clockwise or counterclockwise. Here is the B knob for the B axis. It also turns clockwise or counterclockwise. And on the side of the boom, you will also find the black knob, which adjust, adjusts the C axis. This also turns clockwise or counterclockwise when you are balancing the microscope. Please note that there are two hand controls for the microscope, the left and the right. Here is the right and here is the left. On the hand control, each one has a trigger button, which is in this position. On the left hand control, you will see that there is a toggle. In addition to being able to control the zoom and the focus, the operating surgeon can take videos and pictures by moving this silver toggle knob to the left for videos and to the right for still pictures. Each hand control has a black knob which tightens and loosens the, the handle so that it can be placed in a comfortable position for the surgeon. This is a hand control or clutch or brake button. It's in the trigger finger position. It releases the brake so that the microscope can be moved into the position that the surgeon wants it. These are the zoom and focus buttons. This is the toggle for the surgeon to take videos if he toggles to the left and still pictures if he toggles it to the right. This is the configuration of the microscope for the left ear. If the left ear is being operated on, the camera is attached to the microscope on the left and the assistant will sit to the surgeon's right. This is the configuration of the microscope when the right ear is operated on. Please note that the camera is on the right. The main surgeon oculars always stay in the center and the assistant will be to the surgeon's left. These are the different attachments to the microscope. These are the main surgeon's oculars, the assistant's oculars, the camera head, as well as the KTP laser filter. The KTP laser filter is only used by Dr. Lawani. When you are changing or exchanging microscope parts, it is best to do so over a table.
It, these are the surgeon's main oculars. You will see that it is attached to the beam splitter. Depending on the weather or not a left ear is being done or a right ear is done, it will determine what attachments will go to the left or the right of the surgeon. A camera or the assistant can be attached to the this side, and the same is true on the right side. When you are placing any microscope attachment onto the microscope, it is very important that it is fully seated onto the microscope before you tighten it. If microscope parts are not fully seated and not fully tightened, it is a danger to the patient as well as the staff. Since the camera is attached to the microscope with the cord, it is important to have the table to set the camera on while you are changing the positions of both the camera and the assistant. The same thing is done with the camera head. You slide it on. Make sure that the pins are seated. Once they are seated, you tighten the knob clockwise to secure it. Please note that there is a manual focus knob on the camera head. Turning this knob clockwise and counterclockwise will adjust the focus of the camera. When placing the attachment onto the microscope, this gets placed on here, making sure that the pins are seated, and then this knob is tightened until it is secure to the main piece. For the best range of motion, during a case, these two red triangles on the base and arm of the microscope must be close together. If they are too far away from one another, the surgeon will not have the maximum amount of motion or movement from the microscope. So when balancing the microscope, this is the first thing that you need to check. Once you have turned the power on, you will get this screen and it will do a self-check. Please notice that in the upper right-hand corner, the bright care light is green. You will see that there is balance support. When you press the balance support, it will ask you, would you like to activate the balance support function? Press confirm. This diagram shows you the different axes that need to be balanced before you use the microscope. A, B, and C. D does not have to be balanced. First, you will press A and B. When that is green, the only axes on the microscope that you will be able to move are A and B. When balancing the A axis, turn the knob clockwise or counterclockwise so that the lens, which is this portion, is at approximately a 45 degree angle to the operative ear. The next axis that needs to be balanced is B, and here is the knob to balance B. If it is balanced, the lens should stay at approximately 90 degrees to the floor and facing the wall away from you when the brake or the clutch button is pressed. As you can see, this is slightly greater than 90 degrees. So we will turn the knob so that it is closer to a 90 degree angle. This 
is the approximate angle that you want the microscope when A is balanced, so that it is facing the operative ear and is at approximately 45 degree angle. This is the screen that comes up when you turn the microscope on. Before you can use the microscope, it needs to be balanced. In order to balance the microscope, you will need to utilize the balance support by pressing this area. Once this screen comes up and asks if you would like to activate the balance support function, press the lower left hand corner for confirm. This is the screen and it indicates to you the various axes which will be balanced that need to be balanced before you can use the scope. First, you will balance A and B. Once A, B free is highlighted, the only two axes on the microscope that you will be able to move are A and B. The A knob is located here. Once A and B have been balanced, C must be balanced. We will balance C first by pressing C free. Once that has been highlighted in green, we will go to the knob on this side. We are checking to make sure that when the brake is touched, it does not swing one way to the left or the right the way it is doing right now. In order to correct this, we will turn this knob until it is in this neutral position and does not swing either this way or this way when the brake is touched. This is the neutral position for C. Once it's balanced. Once A, B, and C have been balanced, press balancing completed and then go back to the main menu by pressing the upper left hand corner. As you can see, these are indicators for the magnification, the working distance, and the lamp. Once you have balanced the microscope, turn on the light by pressing this button. Bright care in this upper right hand corner is the self-regulating uh, safety mechanism. This will adjust the magnification, the working distance, and the light brightness so that it is a safe level for the patient. If for whatever reason they want to adjust the light manually greater than what the safety mechanism will allow them to, press bright care, it will turn yellow. It will also give you this warning that you are turning off this safety mechanism. It will ask you to confirm the safety disconnect before you use it. This is what the screen likes. If bright care is not on, you will see that it is highlighted yellow. To turn it back on, press it and it will change to green. This is the KTP laser filter. Notice that the wavelength is indicated on the filter and it is labeled KTP laser filter. The filter goes above the balancing weight like so. Make sure that it's seated fully and properly. Once it is seated, tighten this knob so that it does not move when you
KTP laser filter can be found in the bottom drawer of the Herman Miller in room 1. It is also the Herman Miller where the tracheostomy tubes are kept. Please note that when balancing the microscope for Dr. Lawani's cases, that the KTP filter which he uses on a regular basis is on the microscope. This filter must be placed on the microscope before you start to balance it. The location of the laser filter is between the balancing weight and the oculars. If it is placed elsewhere, the resident may not be protected. Once the laser filter is on, the oculars can be placed on the filter so that the surgeon and his or her assistant's eyes are protected during the use of a KTP laser. Once the KTP filter has been placed onto the microscope, the oculars can be placed onto the KTP filter. Once again, you're making sure that it is seated fully and properly before securing it to the filter. Once it's in place, tighten the knob. The placement and the angle of the video screen can be adjusted by loosening and tightening this knob. Please remember that the purpose of the video screen is for your scrub nurse. It is most important that he or she is able to see what is going on in the field so that he or she can anticipate the surgeon's needs. In addition to being able to take pictures and videos, on the left hand control, you can also take pictures and videos by using this touch pad just below the monitor. You move the mouse and it will allow you to either record or take still pictures by pressing on capture. At the end of the case, Please make sure to power down the microscope. Do not simply unplug it. When you power it down, press the power button. The light will blink for some time before it is fully off. Please be patient and do not unplug it until it has done its shutdown procedure.